You're just a housewife. Don't be so cocky. You can't cook or do housework, and you're just a spender. I've reached my limit. How much longer do I need to bear this until he's satisfied? I was fed up with my husband and decided to leave the house without a word. My name is Haley, a 32-year-old office worker. My husband Kian and I have been married for two years. We met through a group dating, and since we were close in age and shared the same values, we soon started dating. We continued to date steadily, and after about two years, we decided to get married. I resigned from my job when we got married. My husband had told me that he wanted me to be a housewife after we got married. I then became a housewife and worked every day to take care of the house. Not only did I do the cleaning and laundry, but I also cooked every day and made elaborate lunches for my husband. Today's lunch was delicious. My co-workers envied me. My husband happily tells me, and that gave me even more motivation. I put more effort into cooking and made delicious food for my husband, who works hard at his job. I gotta come home straight after work every day because the food is so good. It's so much more meaningful than sloppy drinks with coworkers, and it tastes way better than eating at the local pub. Thanks. It makes me happy to hear that. My husband and I were very happy as newlyweds, but there was one thing in our marriage that could be seen as a bit of a problem. That is my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law has an old-fashioned way of thinking, or rather, she sometimes speaks with old-fashioned common sense. A wife listens to whatever her husband's family says. If you visit your husband's family. You shouldn't have any time to spare," my mother-in-law says to me. Because of this, it was a hassle to go to my parents-in-law's house. How could I want to go there when I had to come home feeling bad about myself every time? At first, I was patient for a while, but then I realized that I really didn't want to see my mother-in-law. I get a stomach ache every time before we leave for their place. So lately, I've been telling them I'm not feeling well and asking my husband to visit them alone. My husband was not happy that I didn't come with him, but at least he did what I asked of him. But he still asked me to come at least for the family gathering during the holiday season, so I had no choice but to go. My mother-in-law sneered at me as soon as I made my way into the house, as if she had been waiting for me. No matter how much you try to avoid me, it's impossible. You're like a slave who has to listen to me. It is really hard to hear such terrible words during such a festive season, and since a huge number of people come to the family gathering, not to mention the preparation, it is very hard to refill the drinks during the party and clean up afterwards. My mother-in-law makes me bear a lot of the burden. Therefore, I could not take a rest. But rather, it was the busiest day of the year. In addition, she has been pressuring me to have a baby as soon as possible. Even though it was only once a year, I was extremely stressed. So I decided to talk to my husband about not wanting to attend a family gathering this year. My husband gave me a very disapproving look. What? You can't stand it for just one day? Stop acting like a baby. You're my wife, and you married into my family. Normally, I'd expect you to follow me there without a word. But even if you say that, your mother bullies me for just being there. And how exactly does she bully you? She always attacks me with her words. The other day, she kept asking me if she'll be able to see her grandchild soon. It's only natural that she wants me to have children as soon as possible, since we haven't had any yet. That's not what I meant. It's the way she says it that's pressuring me. I think you're taking it the wrong way. Maybe you're a little too sensitive. No way. 
I was very sad that my husband didn't take my side. He and I started talking less and less, and it became awkward. He's been working a lot of overtime for a while now, but lately he's been working overtime and coming home late every day. I think that's his way of avoiding me. But then we found out that I was pregnant. I was happy to be pregnant, but the timing of the pregnancy was a little concerning. If my husband and I hadn't been in the middle of a fight, I would have been more pleased. But maybe this would be a good opportunity for me to reconcile with my husband. So I told my husband about it on his day off. Hey, can I talk to you about something? What is it? My husband was surprised to hear me talking to him out of the blue, but he turned his head to listen to what I had to say. I'm pregnant. What? I think we're having a baby. Really? I wondered how my husband would react. I looked at him anxiously. He looked at me in surprise, with widely opened eyes. You're really pregnant? Yes, I am. That's amazing. You're finally pregnant. I guess that means we're going to be parents then. My husband just smiled and said that. I'm glad he's happy about it. I'll tell my mom right away. And with that, my husband contacted my mother-in-law. Mom says congratulations too. I was happy to hear that from my mother-in-law. I felt like I had done my part as a daughter-in-law. No, more than that, I was very happy that my husband and I were able to reconcile and have a child. After that, my relationship with my husband was back to normal. We have normal conversations, and the awkwardness has completely disappeared. Even so, my husband seems to be quite busy at work, and seems to be working a lot of overtime. But we are going to have a baby now, so we have to spend more and more money. And I am grateful that he is working hard. I spent my days thinking that way. As my bump gradually got bigger and bigger, my morning sickness got worse. I didn't think it would get this bad, so it was much harder than I expected. So there were days I had to lie down all day long. My husband was worried about me in the beginning. Are you alright? Should I make some instant noodles for you? Saying this, he would cook something simple for me. That helped for a while, but little by little, his attitude changed. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling well today. Can you prepare something by yourself? What? Again? Haley, you're kind of spoiling yourself too much, aren't you? You do realize I'm coming home tired from work. You say you are feeling well, but you've stayed home the whole time. And you couldn't even cook dinner for me? Even so, I was too sick to talk back. I didn't have the energy. I'm sorry. All I could do was apologize. I felt like my trust in my husband had diminished again. After that, I tried to cope with the situation by putting some leftover dishes in the freezer so that I could defrost them and prepare a meal even if I was feeling sick. And so, I finally gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Oh, it's a girl. She's so cute. My husband looked happy to see his baby. I was a little disappointed at some points during the pregnancy, but I knew that if he could be a good father to her, that would be enough. My husband and I named our daughter Lisa. Lisa was so sweet. She was like an angel. And after I got out of the hospital, I went home with her. And that's when the whole parenting thing started. I was extremely determined to raise my daughter, but it was harder than I thought it would be. I couldn't look away since she cried and cried every single day and night. On top of that, I have to do housework, which is really tough. But when you're focused on raising a child, you can't put much effort into the housework. That's why my husband became frustrated again. 
Hey, where's my lunch? Oh, sorry. I didn't have time to make it. Please, go eat out somewhere or buy something at the store. Huh? You know it's almost payday now, so I don't want to spend a lot of money. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to cook when I'm taking care of Lisa. Damn, you can't even do a decent job of housework even though you're a housewife? What? Whatever. My husband said that and left the house in a bad mood. What in the world is he thinking? I'm busy raising our child. Why can he only think of himself? I began to distrust my husband again. And even though my husband talks big game, he doesn't help me raise our child at all. It's as if he thinks parenting is a job for mothers only. As a father, it should be normal for him to be actively involved in caring for our child. Currently, I am the only one caring for Lisa. Some time passed and my daughter came down with a high fever. It was Kian's day off, so I asked my husband, who was lounging on the couch, to drive. I have to take Lisa to the hospital. Could you please start the car? When I said this, my husband looked extremely irritated. I don't want to. It's my day off. Why don't you drive? Then who's going to carry Lisa? Are you coming with me? No. I don't want to wait in the hospital and catch a cold or something. I can't believe that you would say that as her father. How could you be so uncooperative when your daughter has a fever? Aren't you worried? A fever happens all the time. It's not a big deal. You're making it sound like it's a big deal. Just get out of here and go. I called a cab and hurried to the hospital, as I thought that I couldn't expect anything more from my husband. The doctor took a look at her and her fever went down, so I was happy. Relieved, I took my daughter home. Then, I found that my husband was nowhere to be found. I wondered where the hell he had gone without following me to the hospital. But the first thing I had to do was to put my daughter to bed. I concentrated on taking care of my daughter while cooking dinner in between. But even by nightfall, my husband had not returned home. I wondered if he was out drinking somewhere. If he was, that would be a real terrible move. I ate dinner alone, feeling extremely irritated with my husband. In the end, he didn't come home until 2 a.m. I wanted to yell at him then and there, but that would wake up my daughter. I had to let her rest and sleep for now, so I held it together. The next day, her fever was gone, and she was feeling much better. She seemed to be eating well, which was good. I was very relieved, but I realized that there was still something important to do. I was waiting for my husband to wake up when he came sleepily into the living room in the early afternoon. Good morning. Well, good afternoon would be more like it. Yeah. He was so sleepy that he didn't seem to be able to think straight enough to notice my sarcasm. Where were you yesterday? You were gone when I got home, and I don't think you got home until after 2 a.m. My friend invited me over for drinks. You went out for drinks when your daughter had a high fever? When I said that, he must have finally realized that he was being accused, because he glared at me. Then what? Am I not allowed to do that? You're the one who's taking her to the hospital, so it doesn't matter. Besides, from what I can see, Lisa's fine already. You're always making such a big deal out of things. Oh man, my head hurts. You're really ticking me off. What the hell? You're such a bad father. What? You're just a housewife. Don't be so cocky. You can't cook or do housework and you're just a spender. You're not a good mother either, let alone a good wife. Being accused like that, I had reached my limit. How much longer do I need to bear this until he's satisfied? I was fed up with my husband and decided to leave the house without a word. I immediately went to my room and started to pack my belongings. Hey, what are you doing? He followed me and yelled at me, but I ignored everything. Hey, where are you going? Ignoring his questions, I picked up my daughter and headed for the front door. Hey, 
answer me. Don't you dare ignore me. I continued to ignore my husband's yelling and left the house. I headed straight to my parents' house. My husband kept calling, but I didn't answer any of his calls. When I arrived, my parents welcomed me warmly. Then I decided to stay there and relax for a while. It was the first time in a long time that I didn't have to do housework, and my parents were happy to see their grandchild. I stayed with my parents for about a month. During that time, my husband contacted me several times, but I ignored all of them. I wasn't just staying at my parents, I was preparing for my divorce. First, I looked for a job so that I could support my daughter after the divorce. Then I heard from a former colleague that my former boss had started a company and was looking for new employees because it was starting to take off. I knew the boss well, so I contacted him right away and he offered me a job. And so, I was prepared with my job. I had one more thing in mind. I was preparing to investigate my husband's infidelity. He always said he was working overtime, but somehow I knew he wasn't. The last time our daughter had a high fever and he had gone out drinking, I suspected that he was having an affair with another woman. That's what I thought, so I asked the detective agency to investigate. And my hunch was right. My husband was indeed having an affair. And he had brought her into the house after I had left. I consulted a lawyer with these evidences. He told me that if I had all this evidence, I could get a divorce on my husband's grounds. And when I was ready, I returned to the house where my husband was. What the hell have you been doing? You're a housewife. You're not supposed to leave this housework to me, you stupid. He was about to badmouth me when my husband noticed that my father was behind me. Oh, I didn't notice you there. Is there something inconvenient if I'm here with her? And what's with your attitude? Have you always been that coercive toward my daughter? Oh, no, it's just that she didn't come home for a month and I got a little emotional. My husband shrunk as he hunched his shoulders in words. He's always been a weak man, so when someone as dignified as my father is around, his bravado instantly disappears. I'm actually here to divorce you. What? Divorce? My husband was surprised that I got right to the point. Why are you saying this out of the blue? It's not out of the blue. Have you forgotten what you've done? You've been horrible to me. And most critically, the affair. What? I have photos here that prove it. I said that and scattered the photos. Oh, when did you... My husband rushed to pick them up. You can't get away with this. I'm divorcing you and filing for alimony and child support. When I said that, he became defiant and talked back to me. You've got to be kidding me. I won't accept child support. I'll be taking my daughter with me. What are you talking about? Of course I'm taking her. You don't have a job. You're too financially weak. I'll take her and my parents will raise her. Then there'll be someone to take care of her all the time. No problem. So I won't have to pay child support. You really suck. But unfortunately, I already got a job. It's a full-time job and the pay isn't that much different than yours. You're lying. You don't have to believe me, but I'm in a position where I could take her back. No problem. And since you're having an affair, I have the advantage. Oh no. We'll deal with the rest through our lawyers. I said this and took the rest of my belongings out with my father. My husband was slumped over with a pale face. I then divorced my husband through my lawyer and filed for alimony against him and the affair partner. I got custody of my child and was able to claim child support from my husband. My husband lost all credibility with his co-workers when his company found out about the affair. Because of this, he was transferred to a department where he will most probably never be promoted again. My husband was planning to remarry the woman he was having an affair with, but he was stumped because she was with him just for fun and my mother-in-law could not forgive him for having an affair without helping to raise her grandchild, so she apparently cut ties with him. After that, my in-laws came to my parents' house and apologized to me, so although I haven't completely forgiven my mother-in-law, I accepted their apology. Then I started working hard while raising my daughter with my parents. My daughter is growing up so fast and has recently started to speak. 
I now live happily with my parents and daughter, and she makes my days happy and cheerful every day. So, her husband's attitude towards her was getting worse because he was having an affair. It's disgusting that he was behaving so badly and abusing her with words while having an affair. But in the end, the affair partner dumped him too, and his job ended up not going well, which is what he deserved. It will be tough for Haley to raise her child as a single mother from now on, but I hope she and her parents will work together to raise her child. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.